It must be getting way too easy for companies like SMSL to make good sounding DACs at incredibly low price points. And that means that inversely, it is getting harder and harder for reviewers like me to review DACs at these incredibly low price points because they're so good, the differences are so minute. But with that being said, I am AV Obsessed, and if you're watching this video, that means that you probably are too. And today, I am doing my review of the SMSL D1 DAC and comparing it to the SMSL SU1 DAC. <laughs> SMSL D1 is the newer of the two DACs, and it is available on Amazon for $80. Um, before I shot this video, I did see that it was on uh, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales for $72, 10% off. Makes it an actually amazing deal. And then the previous um, slightly older SMSL SU1 here is available on Amazon for $85. Um, full disclosure part of the video, I bought this DAC myself before my channel was at all big enough for anyone to consider sending me anything. And surprisingly, uh, SMSL actually sent me this DAC directly. I didn't have to pay for it. But everything that I say in the review is completely my own thoughts and uh, the fact that they sent me this for free doesn't mean that it has anything to do with what I'm going to say about it in the review. They literally just sent it to me. They didn't say anything about how I should review it or anything like that. Now going over the two decks physically, um, essentially there's not a big difference between the two. They're both approximately the same size. The SU1 is a few millimeters bigger in each direction, except for height. Actually, it is a little bit taller even. Um, but the biggest difference between the two is the fact that on the D1 here, rather than having a physical button to select inputs, this one has a touch sensitive button for turning the DAC on and off and another little touch sensitive section on the front glass here to select the input. Honestly, I prefer on the, on the SU one, there is no power on and off, which I think doesn't matter with how low the power consumption is on something like this. And it has a physical clicky button for switching between the inputs and let's go over the inputs. On both decks, it is ident essentially identical. The only difference is the D1 has an extra USB-C port for power. Um, they say that they want you to use an external five volt power supply for this, even if you are using the USB-C audio input because there's supposed to be more um, power filtering and stuff going on on the dedicated power input through USB-C. Uh, in my listening, I didn't really hear a difference when I powered it up using a, I actually used a um, an Anchor 20,000 milliamp hour uh, battery to power, to provide power to the unit. Uh, and then also had the EverSolo uh, DMP-A8 going via USB-C into the USB input on this. And I couldn't hear a difference at all whether or not I had that extra five volt power supply plugged in or not. So this thing will run and sound great just using the USB power and audio like input coming from a streamer or a PC or even a phone. And then on the SU one, it does not have that. It just has a single USB-C for power and signal input. And then they both are the same from there. You're gonna get on both of them the optical coax or optical digital input, coaxial digital input, and left and right RCA outputs. So the IO is essentially identical. Um, there's a little bit of a difference in the finish. You can see that the SU1 versus the D1. The, the D1 is a more straight black anodized aluminum casing while the SU1 is more of a like 
anthracite gray kind of finish. But yeah, that's essentially the physical differences between the two. They are extremely similar, and I don't think the differences between the two should have anything to do with your purchasing decision. Now talking about the differences in sound between the two, as I alluded to in the beginning of the video, they sound incredibly similar, which is really surprising because they are completely different DAC chips from completely different companies. The SU-1 having the more mainstream AKM 4493 DAC chip in it, and then the D1 having the Rome uh, BD, I think it's 34352EKV DAC chip in it. Um, so I was expecting there to be a f much bigger difference in the sound quality between the two, but it a lot most of the tracks that I was listening to it was almost impossible to hear a difference between the two. And let me show you the testing setup that I had going on for these two. I actually, the way I had them set up is I had USB, the exact same USB cables going out from my EverSolo DMP A8 into each DAC unit. And on the uh, D1, I used that Anchor 20,000 milliamp hour battery bank to provide an extra five volt output into the D1 to see if that made a, a big difference. And like I said, it didn't. Um, and then I used the exact same RCA cables going out of each of these into the unbalanced one and two inputs on my Macintosh C55 preamp. And that goes into a Macintosh MC462 power amp that is powering my Canton Vento um, 896.2 uh, towers. And also in that system, there is an SVS SB5000 subwoofer to fill in the base. So a pretty high end system. And the reason that I use such a high end system is because if you can connect these very small affordable DACs to such a high end system that is extremely resolving and very powerful and I can play at extremely high volumes and hear very minimal difference between the two, then you could safely assume that if you're using a, a smaller, like lower end system, you're not gonna hear a huge difference between these two DACs. And obviously that kind of system is what they are more geared towards is the more entry level system or desktop audio systems. Like, you know, if you're doing a desktop headphone setup or something like that, that's much more what these are geared towards, but I am testing them obviously with the highest end gear that I have available to me because that's going to help me suss out the differences a little bit more. So what were the actual differences that I heard between these two? Um, like I said, it's it was not the easiest assignment ever to kind of suss out the difference between these two DACs. Most songs that I listened to, it was, they were, they almost sounded essentially identical. I would think that I heard a difference between one and another, and so I would switch from one to the other, and it would be like, oh no, never mind, it sounds pretty much the same. Um, except for when I got to one particular track that's uh, pretty well recorded, like mostly acoustic. It's almost like modern classical music, in, in my opinion, and it's by um, Andrew Bird and Madison Cunningham. And the song is called Stephanie, and it is, for the most part, just acoustic music, stringed instruments, and a little bit of like background vocalizations, but they never actually say any words or sing any words in the song. But through the D1, the guitar that's playing in the the background almost it it stood out more in the center sound stage and then i believe they're plucking the strings on a cello or something like that through the right speaker and there was more body like you could hear the pluck like you could almost hear the the fingers on the strings like more clearly through the d1 it just, it wasn't like it was more detailed. It was just, there was more body to it. And um, 
And then in the, towards the end of the song, I think it's at two minutes and three seconds. The, the whole track is two minutes and 19 seconds long. But there's a part where the female vocalist, I'm assuming that Mad Madison Cunningham, is actually just singing out notes. Like she's not actually singing out words, she's just singing out notes. And at the very end of one of the notes, when she's kind of like trailing off or like, you know, letting her voice come to a natural like resting point there's some feedback in the microphone and that came through a little bit louder and clearer on the SU-1 so I would say that the SU-1 leans a little bit more into the upper level details while the D-1 gives you more of a full like body in like the mid range, like the mid bass area of the frequency response. Um, but then also, like I said, the guitar that's playing during most of that track stood out more in the sound stage through the D one than it did through the SU one, the, uh, the SU one, that guitar kind of sounded a little bit more like lost in the background essentially whereas with the d1 it was standing out more in the sound stage and so like that song kind of sealed it for me that i do like the sound of the d1 a little bit better than the su1 so who are these products for in particular i would say if you are looking to upgrade your DAC, if you're running something older or low end or something that's integrated into your desktop mm. or laptop uh, and you wanna get you know, a little bit better or actually quite a bit better sound if you're using integrated audio that's integrated into your desktop or laptop, either one of these is going to be a great option. If you already have an SU-1, it's still incredibly good, especially at the $85 price point. Uh, but I feel like SMSL is its own greatest competition coming out with the D1 at a $5 lower price point and in my opinion sounding a little bit more natural and doing a little bit better job with the sound staging. So I would say if you have speakers or a headphone setup that you feel like is lacking a little bit of upper level detail but it's already really good in that like mid bass mid range region you might want to consider the su1 but if you're looking for if you already have a system that is leaning cooler and ha and you want to actually emphasize a little bit more in like the mid range and mid bass area i would go with the d1 but like i said both DACs at the price points that these things are at sound absolutely amazing and if you have like a 10 year old DAC or something like that even if it was a pretty high-end DAC 10 years ago, either one of these is probably going to outperform it. So I would say give either one of these a try and um, you'll probably be happy with either one of them. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you wanna see more content like this, then make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. And if you see that hype button that I've heard is a new feature on YouTube, make sure that you click that hype button to kind of boost me in the, uh, the YouTube algorithm. That way I can start getting more products sent to me rather than just spending way more money than I'm taking in because of this YouTube channel. Uh, most products I have to buy that I want to review and this, even though I obviously could afford to just buy this being an $80 DAC, it's still nice that SML, SSM, SMSL sent it to me and I didn't have to spend my own money on it. Uh, so yeah, help me out by subscribing to the channel. I saw on my YouTube analytics the other day that 92.7% of my viewers are not subscribed. I would love to see that number get more down into like the 50% range. Uh, so yeah, like and subscribe and uh, let me know what you guys think. Have you tried either of these really cheap decks? Or if you have any other really cheap decks that you want to recommend, uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one.